Right, so uh, as I say, this is very much cobbled together my thoughts. Um, so here we go. So just a background, um, TFGM, we've got about two and a half thousand sets of signals. Um, over the last couple of years, we've started um, installing late running bus priority at Scoot Junctions, currently at 117 sites, um, both recalls and extensions. Um, as we were just touching on then, from next Sunday, we're starting bus franchising, which is going to roll out over the next two years. So from next week, in tranche one is Bolton, Wigan, sort of like to the west of the Connor Basin, and then, then tranche two next year, 2025, um, tranche three. So uh, TFGM will be running buses throughout Greater Manchester at that point. Um, and so we've got 143 at the minute. We prepared a business case to get basically all scoot junctions that have bus routes going through them um, upgraded to have bus priority installed. So that's another 400 plus. Um, and we're also investigating setting up mover sites that are connected to UTC because all our bus priority is AVL based. So any mover sites that are on an RMS or a Stratos system, we're not looking to install at the minute, but we've got a handful that are on UTC. Um, so at the minute, our existing operation, we've got all commercially run services. So we've got four of the larger operators connected to our UTC system, which are Diamond, First, Go Ahead and Stagecoats. Um, and they're using two different AVL systems. Um, Stagecoats are using VIX, and then the other three are using a ticketer system. So we've got two connections effectively, but all four operators connected. And then, as I say, TFGM for Monday, are going to start operating services and ticket to have won the contract for the TFGM AVL system. So we've got a connection in place with them. Um, and even though I'm saying it's next Sunday it starts, school services in the tranche one area started when schools went back in early September, which was a good test for us because we were a bit worried come next Monday that we were going to, we've set all the background up, sent the, the CSV file over to our, now our bus team to assign all the services to it. We're like, what happens on Monday? We've got these 117 sites. Will it work? We don't know till the buses started travelling around. But then someone said, well, actually, school services are starting in September. We could test those. We hadn't set it up for school services previously because it'd be very hard to um, validate. You'd have to wait at exactly 8.32 when the bus is due at the junction and you miss it and then you wait until the next day. So we thought, well, existing junctions that are set up, we'll put it into the ticket machine for those services. And then luckily two weeks ago, they started coming through which reassured us that come next week, we're not going to have a drop in performance because the existing bus priority isn't working for the Louis franchise services. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Um, initially, a couple of years ago, when we first set it up, we did it along uh, the A6 from Manchester to Hazel Grove, which is the 192 route, if anyone knows it. It's a frequent three or four minute service. Um, and that was the first um, bus priority we set up in Greater Manchester. So we did some analysis afterwards and th there's a few caveats. It was purely based on the, the scoot data that was being output. So if scoot thought the bus got through, we were looking at what the benefits would have been. So if, if when we fingers crossed, we didn't, we hadn't set it up right and the bus didn't get through, scoot would think it has. But that came up with 31 seconds per junction on average, uh, um, mainly based on extents and saving the all of the cycle time before the bus would have got through. And the caveat on the next point, it, the impact on general traffic was broadly neutral, but this was a radio route going, well, north, south. So as we picked up before, when you give bus priority, all the other traffic gets through with it. So we, if we're doing routes where you've got more um, buses going across the main road, I imagine you'd have more of an impact than what we touched on earlier. It's a thing we have wrestled with and discussed and tried to think how to, we'll get onto that later, but the impact and are you messing up the junction and, and scoot if it's validated perfectly, you sort of better linking and obviously coming in a specific a recall, you're messing all that up. But um, So on the back of that, we got a, a very high BCR of over 30 and that's come from the fact that we were using average, because we haven't got real time data on the amount of uh, passengers on the bus, so this is based on average passenger numbers and this 30 odd seconds per junction and then you, you're timing that by a value of time over a year and then it was very low setup cost because we um, set it up purely on junctions we were already running scoot so the only time was mine or other engineers time to go out and set it up which that's where that if you were putting a junction on <coughs> scoot purely for bus priority and you were installing all the infrastructure that would obviously be a bit lower 
but for existing scoop priority because there's no physical infrastructure it's just engineers time and the high passenger numbers that's where we got that high value from um, and then the final point on that slide was that it works very well at the individual junctions so you can see it the bus gets detected it'll then hold it on green if you've got your journey times and whatnot right or a recall it'll bring it in earlier but again the caveat is that's at individual junctions and we'll get on to the next one when you look at a network level that's fit one thing that i think probably needs to be in the improvements of things we need to understand properly what we're doing so lessons issues improvements this was just literally my thoughts over the weekend so there's probably more and some of these things we've already discussed and some of the issues maybe people here will have ideas ways to get around it um, so first point it's relatively simple to set up once you understand what you're doing but establishing the process and working out how to do it in the first place that was quite complex especially as i say i know i'm talking about next week we're going to have a franchised operation where tfgm are running the system but prior to that and for the next two years we've got well four operators connected plus numerous smaller ones so like establishing what you have to do getting a link from the avl systems into our utc system working out where you're going to put the trigger points sending that off to the bus operator the bus operator going what do we want me to do with that because you just send it to the person who puts like the fares into the machine and so like finding who you need to speak to any of the operators once you get to the right person they're generally fine but it it and it, it's just understand how to set it up and then when you're trying to set it up in scoop because uh, we hadn't done it before you're going through all the manuals and working out what to do looking on the arctic website getting all the guidance from there then the operators had their own avl system guidance and so the point is once you know what you're doing it's a bit fiddly but the concept of it isn't too hard but establishing that in the first place if you haven't done it before is what we found quite challenging um other issues it it to me anyway again someone here might be able to answer it a bit better it was unclear how the avl system activates the triggers so the issue about if it's stopping at a stop it triggers before it's even got there and so then i was trying to speak to the operator that who provided the avl system either vix or ticker to well, what, what's happening there and they, they they were a bit unsure and they were saying well we think it predicts it's three seconds in advance and it's the journey it's how fast it's traveling so it, it doesn't know it's going to stop and i couldn't find anywhere exactly how it or find the right person to speak to to establish why that was happening and the, the knock on of that we couldn't install it we had a bus stop near the stop line because you had to put the trigger point that far forward that it became pointless and similarly we tried uh, putting cancel detection at the stop line so that obviously the journey time that you put in in, in scoot it's an average so you have to put i know you've got like this bus uh, uncertainty time you can put in but even then you put a big value on that to make sure it gets through but then it gets through and you think well we could cancel the extension now because we don't need it anymore so this is where we thought oh cancel the text and that looks like the thing we can use but again because of this issue about buses getting picked up early they were getting to the stop line getting stopped the lights are on red you'd want a recall and it goes i'm going to cancel it and so then we turned that off and then the, the only way we could find round it was to put it that far forward it became pointless and then we looked at we can decrease the radii that again was discussed previously but then that becomes a bit of a pain because when we send the file to the operators they're just putting the default values in and so if we try and do it on an individual one each time we want to change we have to go back to the operator and go oh, can we try a 20 meter radius or a 30 meter radius and it just becomes a bit fiddly maybe once post next week we can change that data ourselves maybe we'll be able to play around with that a bit more and get the optimal numbers but even if we can it's still a bit fiddly and that's not going to be appropriate for all local authorities where you, you're still dealing with private operators and you don't have access yourself to the a avl system you're just literally sending the massive spread seat through to them with all your, your trigger points um so other issues standardization of the csv file for different avl systems fix and ticker to have different styles they needed which again just from our management means i've got two spread seats one for stagecoach one for the other three operators things like that could maybe if there was a way for standardizing that as i said um, um setting it up in utc itself um is a bit difficult and onerous and there's a million and one commands to put in you have to chan and rupert but well, this is on the <laughs> unit systems <laughs> and you'll tell me you've got a new module that's going to be in the next uh, in the next release that might make this easier but at the minute it's a lot of chan and rupert commands it's not like 
say you're putting a scoop node on, you've got a scoop page and you can see all your parameters in there and it's obvious what you put on, but when you've got these I don't know, 15 bus priority parameters for a link, unless you remember which ones you need to check, you don't know how you set it up. And so I've got like casts that I've set up with, for those familiar with the units UTC of what, how a cast works with all the commands in and it, it's just, it's not clear, it, me, me point. Um, other issues, and again, people around here would have had similar issues. If you've got junctions close together or roundabouts that are signalised, you, you can't set up bus priorities at stands because, as again, I think somebody mentioned earlier, you give priority to the upstream one, that floods the downstream link, and unless they're properly tightly coordinated, it, it, you cause causing more problems than you solve. So we haven't tried this yet, but the only way I can think of around it is to put control the special condition in, so that you're saying, oh, when you give stage one here green, the next one also green. Um, but again, that becomes more of a faff and you're having problem changes done and whatnot. So um, that's another issue. Um, and again, this, the point we've been discussing quite widely, um, it's the impact across the Scoot region and on other buses that it's, it's very, it's hard to get to understand what the impact of giving bus priority is. Yes, you've improved it at this junction, so that analysis with the 31 seconds, that's great, but it's very hard to get a, a figure of, or have we just made it worse overall? So I think that's maybe something that could be looked at improving, just understanding holistically what we're doing across all junctions across the region. And the point before, I think somebody said about that, if you've got a perfectly validated scoot region, does that do just as good a job? So it's, it's just understanding, I think, using data, also been stood in the street just observing what you're doing. Have you really messed the linking up? And then maybe winding down the bus priority a little bit. Um, the ability, uh, some link to that, the ability to take account of multiple buses, not just the first to arrive, because at, at the minute, the first bus that arrives could be a minute late, that gets priority. The next one turns up two minutes late. Well, not even that, it could be 10 seconds later. That's 10 minutes late. And again, we've touched on passenger numbers. The first one that's a minute late, it's got two people on, one that's 10 minutes late is packed with 70 people on it. Could it be a bit more dynamic to prioritise that probably higher priority bus? Um, yeah, based on passenger numbers, not just lateness. Um, and uh, this is the point I said about earlier, the interaction of the two systems, the AVL system and the UTC system, makes it a bit more difficult, especially is if you're working for a local authority that doesn't have access to the AVL system, it's knowing what's happening between the two. You're just reliant on passing that to the operator, then they assign the services. Um, so it just more transparency there, I think, on both sides would make, and everyone understands what's going on. So I think someone touched on UTC feeding back to the AVL system. That would help with evaluation to go, yeah, you passed this request for priority, we did nothing with it, or we got you through, and you were two minutes late, you're now only a minute late. I think that, that would be a way forward. Um, the last couple of points. Um, it's not always clear why triggers haven't activated. I think this is the point um, that Joel from Leeds said about, and we, we didn't know this until we, we had, I think it was Diamond, we had a Teams chat with, going, we've got this node here, and I've got the trigger point in, it's not seeing anything. And then he got his system up and he was tracking the bus and they were all driving through, they were obviously weren't driving through a building, but that's where the AVL system thought, because I think it had like high-sided buildings either side, so the GPS was a little off. And he's going, oh, that's why you're not seeing anything. So it's, it's having an understanding if it hasn't triggered, is it because the GPS, is it a, a fundamental problem on that stretch of road or just that day he was, if the AVL wasn't working that day on that bus, we don't know that when I'm stood at the side of the road, I just see the number 11 come and then, oh, it's not activated, we don't know why. Um, and then fi this final point is that amending trigger points can be a pain if you don't have access to the AVL system yourself and this is what again was touched on that I put it in and it's not quite worked and you go well I, I want to change that but I've got to go back to the office and I'll, I'll send the CSV back to the operator then a week later they'll put it back on and then they have to go back to site and the fact that you can't amend it yourself is just a bit of a can be a bit of a pain and similarly the last point if and we, we only realised this later on and so we've not set this up yet that if you've got a bus route approaching a junction, or two routes, one goes straight on, one turns right, they both fire the trigger. If you don't have two separate tr trigger points at the same location, you assign number one to the first one, the number two, whatever the bus is, 
to the second, then you can, because obviously they run in different stages. Um, so just things like that can be a bit of a pain if, if you don't realise till you get there. Going, oh, the number 33 is going straight ahead, we need to... So anyway, that, that probably doesn't cover everything, uh, but that was just my cobbled together thoughts on the positives, the things that are a bit of a a bit of a pain and the things that we think could be improved. So that's it basically. What's the thing food for thought for this afternoon? Yeah. I think you've done a really good job there like you talk about you know almost creating the beast, but I think you also started to touch on you've got to carry on feeding the beast. <laughs> and actually it, it, it can if you do something like this and then walk away from it and leave it, you know, it becomes outdated, not effective that you know, can actually do more damage. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think similar a lot of UTC things. It's keeping on top of it. And I think I've said previously that people like love you build a fancy new junction and you have a photo took with it, and everyone loves it. But it's all the keeping all the the background to that going. So whether it's maintaining all the bus priority, bus services change, like you said, keeping on top of that, or like just the the scoot infrastructure, like someone said before about if all your loops go faulty, then. It's it's all that sort of unglamorous background stuff that it's it is like a beast to keep on top of if you're going to have the effect. I mean, we had a service the other day that's actually changed from one operator to another, but no one told us. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so actually, any bus priority we're going to give now there is none. <laughs> but no one thought to think, oh, hang on. There's a, so it's also those business processes about end to end, all of the things that make this work, and understanding are they, you know, is there a good, robust business process around them? To manage that and, and cover these things. Yeah, it's similar, it'll like, change the route, and unless anyone tells us, or we've got that, yeah. you know, the, the number 12 used to go down here, but the operator, for whatever reason, decided it's quicker to go down next. So it's a good quality for straight ahead, and that's the outstanding right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, right. 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 Thanks for that, it's a very, very interesting presentation. Um, I saw him for, from your first slide, we talked about introducing the latest bus priority system, and from the fact that it actually works reasonably well. You're actually, I presume, making sensible use of the priority field in the request messages. It's not just give priority to every single bus. Um, well, basically, every single bus sends a message through to the UTC system, and then within the messages, it uses the scheduled deviation, oh. and then, then Scoot does some calculations, and it gives it a priority of two, four, or six. So yeah, yeah, and then again, gets managing it all. Then, then you translate that into. The difference between Plus priority that works and plus priority that doesn't, I think. Yeah, I suppose getting it, it, <laughs> it's, it, it is, uh, sorry, I don't need it, it's just keeping on top of it or it, to, to get it to work, you need to really. Yeah. Uh, just to say thank you for articulating in a much better way than I did why we're so keen on getting the second by second or similar type data and having the processing on our end so that you can manage the triggers yourself and all these sorts of issues um, and have more visibility of it. That, that's kind of exactly why we're so keen on going down that route. Um, because it is just, yeah, having all of that lined up and enough people in your team who know what they're doing is just a nightmare. I, I, I sometimes think it's a miracle that any of it actually works at all. Um, <laughs> so, so, and and I've, I've come into it relatively late in the day. I think it's probably more difficult, you know, a few years ago. But, but I feel like, for us, having that process in our, on our side, the idea of getting out on site and realising the trigger's in the wrong place and not being able to do anything about it for two or three weeks, by which time, because your team's stretched, they've moved on to another site and you know, it, never gets, it never gets sorted out. So I think, yeah, it, this is just a perfect example, really, of um, yeah, all of the sort of obstacles that you have to work your way through. It's, it's probably raises a really good point about people and skills. The problem is isn't enough people with bus priority skills in the UK to roll out bus priority across every region in the UK um, and maintain it. But I think that's something we probably need to do pick up on about these skills. That, I mean, you've obviously had to learn this and you've, you've tripped and stumbled and found your way through it. You know, great. You know, and you've kept at it, but there's a lot of people who probably have given up or, you know, or have faced almost like, oh, yeah, it just didn't work, they've just abandoned it. You know, I think that's a really important way you're going to have to... It's going to be a core of people that are going to be able to make stuff work, isn't it? I don't think it's a little bit more. I don't think it's a little bit more. We're doing all that on the back of just normal looking after the UTC system. Sorry, I'm just going to 
on top of the bacon. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> And then we need to go for lunch fairly soon. I'll be quick. Um, and off TFL. Um, very relatable and lots of smiling and nodding along to those points there. Um, it um, seems very familiar, a lot of those things you've raised. We're certainly in, in the midst of trying to catch up with all the route changes over the, the city over the years. And we're finding that we're getting a lot more detection and priority just by correcting the, the location points, the routes, the turning information, and just getting that in lockstep with what's happened in... You know, the last 10 years in terms of what's gone on there and all the route changes, so that's a shared thing and a bit of a bottleneck for us. Um, your point around um, bus stops on the approach to junction, just sharing a little bit of a, how, how we handle that. We, we seem to be able to set the, um, the trigger condition um, in our system, and, um, and my colleague Sat will probably talk a bit more about this later, I thought, or can, or can go into detail, but we can set it so that it triggers only when the door's shut following a boarding cycle, so that helps get around that problem. Um, so maybe there's uh, ability to do that or to specify that at that point. I'm aware of that. I mean, sort of after my answer this morning, I have a on our system, I was saying, I don't know how We've got three three sort of conditions off the top of my head. We can either detect at that location, detect with an offset of a distance, or go through that you know, boarding on button, you know, doors closing sequence before sending that message. So that helps you with that, that particular situation. Uh, okay, so what's that relate to? How do we have to understand it? I don't know when, I don't know how it's sending a message to me. I just take it for granted. It does it. It will come through my computer to me, but it's all that when it's slowing down and it's definitely there. Yeah, when we, when we design it and we have to sort of put that information about whether you want it to trigger there with an offset or, or that extra type there, but there'll be user run stops. But um, we find that just trying to put the, if it's a normal normal approach, try and get it back as far as possible gives the most op opportunity for it to detect and make a reasonable decision. Yeah, uh, it's saying, hey, we, uh, we would love to go for 13 seconds back if we can. But when you've got the bus stop, literally. Yeah, that's a challenge. <laughs> well, there is a solution to in the data in the trigger format standard, just for the London issue in uh. particular. <laughs> I'll be quiet. And then we'll go for lunch. Yeah, just a quick question about your analysis. Did you say you used scoop data for 31 seconds? Yeah, 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 just a few days to solve. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 And then the analysis team had the memory of the camera data, so it needs to be one of the logic about the analysis team that didn't want to get it, because it's a happy data, and that happens a lot of the social. Just to muddy the waters a bit more as well, I've tried to use Scoop Command Journey Time to alleviate the bus stop in the stop line. Oh, okay. By shortening that. It takes a little while, but it can improve. Ah, so you, is it a bus journey time? Uh, on your scoop commands, yeah. you've got the um, scoop journey time message, mm -hmm. and it can only be yeah. to trigger the journey time that you've got yeah, from the uh, bus arriving to trigger the journey Ah, so it's very well. You shorten that you know, to almost a minimum that it'll accept. Oh, well, I'll have a play with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've found that you can shorten that to three seconds or four seconds. Arrival rate quite quite well. Ah, I love it. Why spend two or three hours on something? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, what are you doing? We've got some that we've got calendars yeah. on, so yeah. for yeah. experimental things like that, I tend to do it because yeah. all the problems are standing in the rain. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry you felt the pain, but it's enjoyable this morning. So. I'm sorry about your pain, but it's enjoyable that someone else has been through it as well. Yeah, yeah, well, that's quite going to be a shock because some of these things that you should just mean that. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that, a lot of this has been done by literally the time and the next 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 time. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.